for fire. It doesn't have the word Agni, but it has the god Agni. Greek also has Pyr for fire and Germanic Führ for fire. Aryaman appears in Avestan, in Mycenaean Greek, in, in Celtic, in Gaul, Ariomanus, in Ireland, Eramon, in Germanic, Irmin. But this term is very common to all Indo-European languages. However, you'll notice that not all branches retain the name of the god. The same with the Aus. Hittite has got this Zeus, Greek has Zeus, and Latin has Jupiter, and Germanic Tiwas, and Russian Divu. Again, some languages retain the name, other languages lose it. Next one, please. Sanskrit has got Apam Napat, which is the offspring of waters, and it is really another name for fire, the submarine fire. Now you find it in Avestan, of course, Apan Napa, in Latin, Neptunus, and in Irish, Necht. Now that may surprise you, but in fact, the Irish lost the P and changed it into K. Then Surya appears with the Kassites in the Middle East as Shuryash, in the Greek, Helios, Latin, Sol, and then Germanic, Welsh and Slavic have got the name for the sun, a variant of Surya, Sabin, and that sort of thing. Then Ushas, the dawn goddess, appears in Greek as Eos, Latin Aus, Rora, Germanic Eostre, Avestan Usha, Lithuanian Austra, Lithuanian Aushma, and Celtic Gaur. So again, some languages retain them, others do not. Observe that Vedic has all six of them. Greek has four, Latin has four, Germanic has three, Hittite has two, Slavonic has two, and Celtic has two. However, you know, the Rig Veda has got 20 such names. I, I'm not going to put them all up in, on the board because it would take us much too long. But this gives you a taste of what I mean. Rigveda has 20 such theonyms. Greek, which has the most, has only eight. The next one. Only eight. And then Germanic, then Latin, Slavic, Baltic, and so on. So you see the superiority of the Rigveda as far as preservation goes. Next one, please. Now, we are going to go into poetics now. This is, uh, these are two lines from uh, Homer, Iliad, and Odyssey, uh, which show you, in fact, uh, that it has got a regular meter is called the heroic hexameter. If you count them, you'll find that it's got six padas. The first one, six padas, the second one, and the same long, 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 short, short. And it's exactly the same in the other um, line. Uh, do you want me to, to pronounce it? Pantasgar file esken do doi. Epi oikia nayon. And it doesn't mean exactly what is what the translation says. Hosmin Zeinon Eonta Katektanen, there should be an accent here, I'm sorry. Hoi eni oikoi. Well that's uh, the point about this is that it has a regular meter. Okay, remember this. Let's move to the next one, please. Now, here we go to Germanic poetry. In fact, it's old English, uh, very old English, before 1000 CE, around about 700. And it's a seafarer, it's a very beautiful poem. And it says, 
What's important here is the alliteration. H, him, her, pan, hige, hring, sege. And you find another H at the end, hich. In the second line, you've got W. Wif, win, worulde. It's got alliteration, but it hasn't got any meter. It hasn't got any meter, it hasn't got any rhythm. So in Greek, you've got meter, very regular, but no alliteration, no assonance. Here you have alliteration and assonance, but no meters. Now observe modern English, an iambic pentameter, as it's said, as it said which has stress, not stress. Hmm? Stress, but not length. It, if all would lead their lives in love, like me. Now, modern English, you see, has got meter, but it's a stress meter, it's not length, and it also has alliteration with the L. Lead, live, love, like. Next one, please. And here we come to Sanskrit. I'm sorry, this should have been Dundu Be. It's the drum. Dundu Pa. My secretary made a mistake there. She's made several. Indrena, and now I should have been, have a dot underneath, and there should be an accent also. Well, now observe Sanskrit, Vedic, thousands of years before modern English, before uh, Old English, before Germanic, before Old Greek, has got all things. This is the Trishtub structure with 11 syllables, some long, some short, but it also has magnificent alliteration. Sadundu Phe, Sajurin Dvena Devai, Durad Daviyo Apasedha Shatru. The D, D repeats. Do you follow? So it has got both aspects. It's not only that, but it also has assonance, u, u, u. And again at the end, u, u. Now if you listen carefully, you'll hear these sounds rolling along. And it's like hearing the beating of the drum. Now, another thing that you find in poetry generally, in ancient poetry, modern poetry, is the riddle. You are aware of the fact? Yes. Much modern poetry is riddled, uh, full of riddles. I don't know if you noticed it. In fact, uh, very often you can't really find an answer to these riddles. And I, it's quite possible that the poet himself didn't have an answer. Can we have the next one, please? Now, there are riddles in the Rig Veda. Tigmam eko bivarti hasta ayudam shuchi ugro jalasha bhesha jal. Now, you are all, well, most of you are Sanskrit scholars here. Now, there is, they always give a hint as to what deity it refers to. Jalasha bhesha jal is the clue. So, can you guess who the god is? Who? No, no. Shiva? No, Shiva is not in Rig Veda. Rudra. Rudra. Uh, Shiva Rudra, yes, but Shiva Rudra is later. Rudra in Rig Veda. Uh, and of course, one of his uh, one of his qualities was that he was a medicine man. He brought. Uh, therapies for diseases. The next one you should be is much easier. Trini eta uragayo vichakrame yatra devaso madanti. 
Uraga, Urugaya. Who is Urugaya? Three. Please, Lord Vishnu, Lord Vishnu. The three steps of Vishnu. So, this aspect also is in Rig Veda. But the Rig Veda has got very beautiful poetry. And it's not just these aspects. I mean, people, uh, especially students, uh, really get uh, disgruntled with the Rig Veda because they have to learn Vedic, which is a little bit more complicated than classical Sanskrit. But the poetry of the Rig Veda, once you learn it, is fantastic. There is no other poetry in beauty as that. Can I have the next one, please? Now observe what uh, Watkins said in 2001. I mean, it's not just my opinion. You see, others share my opinion. And look at this beautiful stanza. Vishwede te janima samvivito maho devan vibrati navyate te. You've got again va, 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 va. Eja dhruvam patyate vishvam ekam charat patatri vishunam vijatam. Va, va, va. Repeats. It's easy to remember when you have got this alliteration, it's very easy to remember. But apart from the technique, observe the, the, the semantics of it. Because really, ekam is neuter, and everything here is neuter, all this is neuter, this is neuter. So, what's the subject and what's the object? But whichever way you take it, you arrive at the concept of absolute unity. The universe is unified. What in fact I suspect it is saying is the way I have translated it. But you could also say, uh, you know, the, um, the whole governs everyone. It will still come to the same thing. There is unity. And this is the beauty of this uh, stanza. There is another stanza that I remember. Um, Hansa Shuchi Shad Vasur Antariksha Sad Hota Vedishad Adithir Durona Sad. It's using Sad as the basis, as the structure. And then it goes on. Nrushad. Varasad. Rutasad. Vyomasad. Abja. Goja. Rutaja. Adrija. Rutam. Rutam. The cosmic order. The cosmic scheme the natural course in the universe comes from all these, all phenomena fall within this cosmic order. And as I said, the verse is structured on this repetition of sharp. Everything is seated in the cosmic order. Next one, please. Now, uh, before I criticize Barrow as a historian, but as a linguist, he is a very great Sanskritist, and he wrote the a substantial book, The Sanskrit Language, which is a, a textbook, remains the primary textbook to this day. And he says what he says. Now, consider Greek. You have a verb, heo, which means I pour. It comes, it's cognate with Sanskrit, hu, juhoti, sacrifice, pour. Now, from heo, you have keuma, and that's all right. You still retain the ke. Then you've got kuma, 
which means fluid. Air is disappeared and you've got U. And then you've got Koe. A and U have disappeared and you've got O. And then you've got Kos. So one wonders, I mean, you may not wonder because you don't know much about it, but I who do know much about it do wonder what the hell is going on. Now, how can A become O, U, O, and so on? Then observe Sanskrit dr, driti, driti, dhara, dharma, dhara, dharana, and so on and so forth. Eh? Now, we know in Sanskrit there is a very regular principle governing the changes. You have the simple vowels, and then when they give you primary derivatives, you have the, uh, you may have a guna formation uh, from dr with the primary krit suffix, you get dhara. But if you have tadhita suffix, you have vridhi. Uh, so you have Vid for knowing, Veda and Vedika. Hmm? So you have got these three gradations. Now E will not give you O. U will not give you A. Sorry? When? No, that's correct. What I'm saying is that U will not give you A. No. And E will not give you O. U will give you O, E will give you A. This is regular. This is principal. Greek is totally unprincipled. And Greek is okay. But if you look at Latin and Germanic, it's even worse. Next one, please. Now, negation and prohibition. Some in the European branches have na, ne, no. For you will not do this, you mustn't do that, and so on. Latin, Celtic, Slavic, Germanic. Others have got ma, mi, me, tocharian. Armenian and Greek. Now, Sanskrit and Avestan have both na and ma. Do you follow? Again, Sanskrit shows itself to have preserved everything. Not Sanskrit, Vedic, really, Vedic Veda. Has got it all. There is next one, please. And here we come to the perfect tense. Huh? Chakara, chakre, babhuva, and so on. Now, some branches did not have one at all. Tocharian and Armenian have no perfect at all. But there are, in fact, three types of perfect. There is the reduplicated perfect, which is common. It's the commonest of the lot. And I give you an example from Avestan, Tatasha, Haspashun, which it corresponds to Sanskrit, Tataksha. Huh? And then Greek, Dedorka, which corresponds to Sanskrit, Dadarsha. And Germanic, Heid, Heid, I don't know what that corresponds to. It probably doesn't correspond to anything. But then there is the simple perfect, as you find in Veda, in Avestan, Vaeda, Germanic, Vaid, Latin, Gnovit. Gno, Gno is the same as Sanskrit, Jnya. Hmm? Then there is also the 